is a privilege and one that I did not expect to have and one that I'm delighted to have uh, to welcome to the Royal Albert Hall tonight and to listen for the next 50 minutes uh, to the initial presentation from Mr. Ahmed Didat. Thank you, sir. I would like to have you first. I pray, God, God bless you. I love you, brother. I love you. I love you. I love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بل نكذف بالحق إلى الباطل فيدمغه فاذا هو ذاهك ولكم الويل مما تصفون صدق الله صدق الله مرة نزيف Mr. Chairman Respected Speaker and my dear brothers and sisters, the subject is Jesus God, can very easily be solved by asking a counter question. Did Jesus claim to be God? Did he say I am God? Did he say worship me? And believe me, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, there is not a single unequivocal statement in any of the 66 books of the Bible or the 73 of, 73 of the Roman Catholics where Jesus says, I am God, or where he says, worship me. There isn't. I would have been very happy to hear Jesus, the, from the lips of Jesus, this simple, straightforward, explicit statement. I am God, I worship you. Because I as a Muslim, and we Muslims as a whole, we believe that Jesus Christ was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe in his miraculous birth. We believe that he was the Messiah. And we believe that he gave life to the dead by God's permission, and he healed those born blind and the lepers by God's permission. This is really the only point of real difference between the Muslim and the Christian is the divinity of Christ. And for that, I say that our brother has not adduced a single statement from the lips of Jesus saying, I am God or worship me. While he walked this earth, he never made such a statement. Of course, our brother has a chance, my brother Shorosh, of coming back and perhaps he might be able to point out to me in case he had overlooked it. The nearest he came to that was a quotation from the book of Revelation where it is supposed to be the words of Jesus where he says I am Alpha and Omega meaning I am the first and the last. Now this book of Revelation was a dream. Was a dream in which John in the dream he saw a vision in which he saw animals with eyes inside and eyes outside and horns with eyes on it. All this is a man if he eats too much he gets that type of experiences. <laughs> but while Jesus walked this earth we will analyze what he actually said and what he did. Now the idea of the Holy Trinity in which the Christian, the bulk of Christendom, including the Anglican Church, the Roman Catholics, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, the Methodists, almost as a whole, they believe in this thing called the Holy Trinity. In the Christian Catechism of the churches, they say, I'm quoting, that the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Ghost is God. But there are not three gods, but one God. He says, the Father is Almighty, the Son is Almighty, and the Holy Ghost is Almighty. But there are not three Almighties, but one Almighty. It, it continues. I'm quoting the Catechism. He says, the Father is a person, the Son is a person, and the Holy Ghost is a person. But there are not three persons, but one person. I'm asking, what language is that? Is that English? It sounds English, 
but this is not English. Person, 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 but not three person, but one person. I said, what language is that? What is a person in your language, you English people? Tell me, you Americanized Englishman. Tell me, what is a person in your language? If you and your two other brothers are identical triplets, we can't make out the difference between the three of you. You are all identical. If one of you commit murder, I am asking, can we hang the other? You say no. I say, why not? You all look alike. So he tells me, no, he is a different person. What makes him a different person? It is his personality. If the personality is different, he's different. And when you say, the Christian says, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, I say, you have three distinct mental pictures in your mind. When you say Father, you don't think of the Son. When you say the Son, you don't think of the Holy Ghost, are you? There are, and these three pictures, you can never superimpose and create one. There'll ever be three in your mind, unless the mind is diseased. You say, these three I see as one. The three will ever remain three. Now, as far as the Muslim is concerned, believing that any human being, any human being is God or is equating with God, it is an act of treason against God. Whether it's a Hindu idea of a God incarnate, or whether it is a Christian idea of a God incarnate, God becoming a man, the Holy Quran says, Lakat kafar al lazina qalu inna Allaha hu al Masih ibn Maryam said, whosoever says that Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is God, they are making kufr. It's an act of blasphemy. It's a treason against God. وَقَالَ الْمَسِيحِ But Christ said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, لَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ Worship Allah, Rabbi wa Rabbukum, who is my Lord and your Lord. إِنَّهُ مَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ Whoever will associate anyone with Allah, فَقَدْ حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ لِلْجَنَّةِ Allah will make Jannat haram for them. Heaven will be forbidden for them. وَمَعْوَهُ نَارِ And the fire of hell will be the dwelling place. وَمَا لِلْظَالِمِنَ مِنْ أَنْصَارِ And for the wrongdoers, there will be no one to help. And Jesus Christ, He is speaking about the Father in heaven. He is your Father and my Father. Again and again, in the Gospel of St. Matthew, if you start taking stock from chapter 1, verse 1, you will come across this phrase, your father, thy father, your father, thy father, 13 times before the first time he says, my father. It's an amazing situation. That 13 times the man is telling you that God Almighty is the father of everybody. Metaphorically, he is the creator, sustainer, evolver, cherisher of everybody. He is the father of everybody, but physically he does not beget. Because begetting is an animal act. It belongs to the lower animal functions of sex. And we were not to attribute such a quality to God, that God begot a son. Though the Christians keep on repeating the words, son of God, son of God, son of God. So he said, what about Adam? He said, how many sons has he got? The bulk of Christendom will tell you one. I said, you're not reading your Bible. You don't read your Bible properly. You know, God has got sons by the tons in the Bible. By the tons. You know, tons, the old measurement of weighing things. Tons. Genesis chapter 6, verse 3. It says, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them to wife all that they chose. And when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and brought children to them, they became great men of all, old men of renown. In the book of Exodus, God says, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. In the book of Je Jeremiah, says, Ephraim is my son, even my firstborn. In the New Testament, we are told, as many as are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Every Tom, Dick and Harry, if you follow the will and plan of God, you are a godly person. In the language of the Jew, in the idiom of the Jew, he says, son of God, meaning a righteous person. The Christian said, no, 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 Jesus is not like that. He's begotten, not made. So I'm asking, please explain to me. I'm asking the English-speaking people. Please explain to me 
what are you trying to emphasize? When you tell me he is begotten, not made, what are you really trying to tell me? And believe me, no Christian in 40 years has been able, able to open his mouth to tell me what it means. It had to be an American, not Brother Sharosh. It had to be an American. He said, it means sired by God. I said, what? He said, no, 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 you ask me what it means. I'm only telling you what it means, not that I believe that God sired a son. So, he says, Jesus Christ. I don't know, this to the Muslim is a blasphemy to say that Jesus is God. But there is another blasphemy from the Christian point of view. You see, the Christian, the Orthodox Christians, the, the Anglican Christians, the Methodists, and all the Roman Catholics, they all believe in the Holy Trinity, and they say that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. You never hear the word is in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. You'll never hear in the name of the Holy Ghost and the Son and the Father. Never. You'll never hear in the name of the Son and the Holy Ghost and the Father. It must ever be in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He is always the second person of the Trinity. If anybody in Christendom says that Jesus is the Father, it is a heresy in the Christian church. From the Muslim point of view, attributing divinity to any created being is blasphemy, kufr. But from the Christian point of view, from the church's point of view, Anglican, Methodist, Lutheran and all, if anybody says, has the temerity to say that Jesus is the Father, it is an ancient heresy which was condemned and extirpated by the Roman Catholic Church over a thousand years ago. They got rid of it. Where you say, and our brother Shorosh, my brother Shorosh, I don't know why he hid that fact, that he actually believes that Jesus is the Father. In his book, The Liberated Christian, in case he has forgotten it, he might not have brought it along, I brought it along with me, the liberated Christian. Palestinian. Uh, the liberated Palestine, I beg your pardon. With the Star of David in the background, I don't know, liberated from the Jews or liberated from what? Liberated Christian. He says, I'm quoting from page 80, it's a most loving heavenly father. I thank you for the miracles you have done in my life. The greatest miracle of, miracle of all was that you loved me enough to die for me. Who the Father died for him. And this is in church history, as Master of Divinity, Brother Shorosh will be able to confirm, is an ancient heresy which is called Patripassianism or monarchianism, or sibilianism. You don't have to worry about these two yard long terms. But this is in church history. It had been extirpated some thousand years ago. But it is, he is the father. But Jesus contradicts this statement. He says, call no man your father on earth. For there is only one who is your father, which art in heaven, Matthew, Chapter 23, verse 9. And Jesus is a man on earth, walking this earth, which Peter testifies in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 22. He says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man, approved of God among you. A man. By miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him. He didn't do it. God did by him. He was using Jesus. God Almighty was using Jesus, which God did by him in the midst of you, which you yourself also know. So he is not the Father. He says to the Jews, Ye have neither heard his voice, the voice of God, at any time. You have not heard the voice of God any time, nor seen his shape or form. At any time, the Jews were seeing Jesus and they're listening to him. They didn't hearken to the message. 
But they were listening to him. They were not deaf, all the Jews. They were reacting to his message. They were listening. They were hearing and they were seeing and they wanted to stone him and he used to get out of the way. He used to run away. He used to hide. He, they were seeing his form and he used to disappear, not into thin air, but hiding away, running away, according to the Bible. So he could not be the father and he could not be that God. The Bible gives us a test. But what God is not. What God is not. Like in Islam, in the Quran, also we are given. What God is not. That God is not like anything you can think or imagine. Anything you think or imagine is not Him. We are given some 99 attributes of God that is kind, is merciful, is just, is holy, and on and on, 99. But there are certain things that He is not this, He is not that, He is not that. The Bible also gives us what God is not. It says in the book of Job, chapter 25, verse 4 to 6, said, how then can man be justified with God? How can you compare any human being with God? How can he be clean that is born of a woman? Anyone that is born of a woman is not good enough to be compared with God. Anyone, whether it's a Moses or a Jesus or a Muhammad, whether it's a Rama or a Krishna or a Buddha, anyone that a woman carries for nine months can never be your God. That's what the Bible says. When even the moon is not bright and the stars are impure in his sight, in the sight of God. What is all this? This moon, the stars, what is it? Nothing. How much less is man? You see, the Christians are thinking that, look, Jesus is born of a woman, no doubt. But he was born miraculously, which we agree. So that makes him something supernatural, because he, he was born miraculously. So God Almighty, in this book, the Christian Bible, he says, how much less is man? If the sun and the moon and the stars are nothing in his sight, what is man? You and I, what are you, what are we? How much less is man who is but a maggot? You know what's a maggot? You people living in concrete jungles, you don't know what maggot is. You know maggot. I won't describe. You better look up the dictionary, Oxford Dictionary will tell you. Maggot. Those worms, you know, that goes on manure. Human dung. Maggots. You and I, according to this book of God, you are nothing more than a maggot. And the son of man. Who? Jesus Christ. Explicit statement. In case you have something at the back of your mind, that Jesus is an exception, God Almighty goes out of his way to tell you, look, this Jesus of mine is no exception. And the Son of Man, ask any Christian, who is the Son of Man? Eighty-three times in the New Testament, Jesus Christ is described as the Son of Man. Son of Man, Son of Man. Is that the foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hasn't got a place to rest his head. And the Son of Man, as sign of Jonah, for as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, so shall the Son of Man. Eighty-three times. Thirteen times his address as the Son of God. Thirteen times. But 83 times, 70 more times, son of man, son of man, son of man, and ask any Christian missionary, who is the son of man? He said, Jesus. So God almost and the son of man, who is only a worm. Worm. He's a worm. We are maggots. A worse degree than a worm. He is a worm. In other words, don't make a mistake. Anyone that is born of a woman, and the Bible tells us in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verse 21, when he was eight days old, he was circumcised. God getting circumcised? Please, please, we must heed the advice given at the beginning that... There should be no clapping for this. At the end of a talk, if you give an applause, accept it for both parties, please. Thank you. Okay. When he was eight days old, he was circumcised and named Jesus by the angel when he was in his mother's womb. Who was in his mother's womb? Jesus. How did he come out from there? Like you and me. 
who God. I am asking if you were a nurse, you can imagine any situation. If you were a nurse 2,000 years ago in this table, helping Mary when she's delivering the child, can you for one moment think that that helpless little creature with all the filth and the muck, your God, your Jehovah, your Allah, Astaghfirullah. Now, the human mind, it repels the idea that this puny little creature, which made his mother impure for 40 days, that's what the Bible says. She had to be purified after 40 days. What made her impure? The birth of a holy God making her impure? No. It's a human child. Like you and me. It made Mary impure for 40 days. She carried him for nine months. The Anglicans in England today, they are a little more reasonable than the evangelists. There was a shock survey of Anglican bishops in June last year, here in, in the UK. And more than half of England's bishops say Christians are not obliged to believe that Jesus Christ was God. No more. You don't have to believe. If your salvation and mine depended upon that, because your salvation, if you are a Christian, the Christian believes that Jesus must die as a God. Because one man can't carry the sins of the world. If he died on the cross, we say they didn't kill him and they didn't crucify him. We prove the point in July here. We will not go into that. But the Christian must believe that Jesus must die as a God and not as a man. Because one man can't carry the sins of the world. So God died? We are asking. You believe that God died? You say he's eternally mortal? And he died. So once he dies, what happens to his creation? You know the power, power, where it's coming from, this power that's coming into this hall here. The substation or the head station. If they switch it off there, what can you do with all your switches? Finish, you're gone. It's in, you are in darkness. If God Almighty, if his light is extinguished, who runs his universe? Who kept it going? For three days and three nights, he was away in the tomb as the Christians are dead. For three days and three nights. For three days and three nights, who was controlling the universe? Who? No. No. I say, Jesus Christ never claimed at any time, I am God or worship me. On the contrary, he said, my father is greater than I. He said, my father is greater than all. John chapter 20 verse 29. He said, I can of my own self do nothing. John chapter 5 verse 30. He said, I can do nothing. God can do everything, anything. Ah, except. My brother Shorosh was saying that God can become a man. He can do anything. I said, no, he can't do anything. Am, am I limiting God? I says, no. I'm telling you and I'm challenging people to prove to me that God Almighty, He can create another God. He is uncreated, He can create another uncreated. He is eternal from the beginning which has no beginning. Now He can create another equal to Him. Where? How? As soon as He creates somebody, He's created. That means He can't create an uncreated. Look, this is common sense. He can't create another God. Can he make another father? There will be two fathers, then he can make a dozen fathers, can't he? So my Hindu cousins are more consistent. They believe in millions of God. Anything is God. Everything is God. He's more consistent. He's more reasonable. Why are you so unreasonable? You only make one exception. Why shouldn't we have more gods, more sons, physical sons? No, he says, ah, and further, he can't throw me out of his kingdom. This God Almighty, can he throw you out of his kingdom, out of his dominion? Is there a place outside his dominion where he can throw you out? Can he? He can't. Can you imagine him throwing you out? Where, where, where can he throw you out? Ha, ah, he can obliterate you, yes. He can finish you up, yes. But he can't throw you out of his dominion, out of his rule. He can't. 
Now that doesn't mean he's limited. This is how powerful he is. His dominion extends over the heavens and the earth. Everywhere, whatever you can think or imagine and beyond. So where can he throw you? See, God Almighty does. He can do anything, but what he does are godly things. God must do godly things. He doesn't do monkey tricks. Look, I don't expect Brother Shorosh to do monkey tricks, nor do you expect me to do monkey tricks here. Do you? A man comes so many thousand miles away from Africa. Another brother comes so many thousand miles from America to do monkey tricks here. What do you expect us to do? If somebody told you that, you know, did that and the show, show you know, <laughs> we're having the dance in front of the stage. Would you believe it? Would people believe you? So we don't expect these people, these godly people to come along and do, you know, jiving here. No. God Almighty, he does godly things. He doesn't do ungodly things. He says further, Jesus, he said, I, with the finger of God, cast out devils. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. He says, I cast out devils by the Spirit of God. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28. He says, the power, the power we are talking about. He had power to do this and power to do He had power to forgive sins. We did get it. Ask him. He says, all power is given unto me. It's not mine. It's given to me by who? By the Father in heaven. God Almighty gave him the power. A general power of attorney. What do you want? I give it to you. And he gave him that power to heal the blind, the lepers, and quicken the dead, and kill those 2,000 pigs, according to the Bible, and drying up the fig tree from its very roots, and stilling the storm. Who, where did he get the power from? From God. So glory to God, and somebody rightly remarked in the New Testament, when he performed a miracle, he said, glory to God for giving such powers unto men. This is it. Glory goes to God for giving such powers unto men, not to the man, to God. Jesus says, my brother says in the Quran, it is said that he knew, he knows the time of the coming of the hour of judgment. I think he has misread the Quran. The Quran is here, he can check it up. I would like to see where he says he knows, or God says he knows. The Bible contradicts that, the Holy Bible. It says, but of that day and that hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels, nor neither the Son, but the Father in heaven. In other words, in my knowledge, I'm not like God. In my power, I'm not like God. Mark chapter 13, verse 32. The big question remains, where does he say I'm God, or where he says worship me, or where does he say that I and God Almighty are one and the same thing? Is there a single Christian who can give me a verse that me and God Almighty are one and the same thing? Is there a Christian in this vast audience who can give me? John 14. No, what does it say, John 14? What does it say? That I am... Right. John, no. I, the reference is incorrect. No, the reference is not 14.6. The reference is, is, the quotation is right. I and my father are one. The quotation is correct. But it is John chapter 10, verse 30. Please, please, silence, please. The reference is John chapter 10, verse 30. Now, you know, if I ask, you will have the chance to ask questions, my dear brothers. Please sit down. Would you please sit down? I'm sorry, we're going to take questions later. We're not having interruptions now. Please, would you sit down now? Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Bidat. Yes, sir. Stewards. I am... Silence, please. I am, I am reading from my head. And my brother Shorosh just confirmed it, that it is John chapter 10, verse 30. Now, the context. You see, in 40 years, for 40 years, I have been talking to people. And 
when this verse is quoted, that Jesus said, I and my father are one. The verse is there in the Bible. You can't contradict that. I'm asking, what is the context? And believe me, in 40 years, I have not come across a single learned man of Christendom, a single man in 40 years, who could give me the context. Yeah, you can open the book, yes, by opening the book. But no man in my life, 40 years now, no Christian with the name could give me the context. You, ha you have to open the book. Without opening the book, you'll never be able to give you the context. Now, let me give you the context. You see? The context is verse, starting from verse 23. It says, Jesus walked in Solomon's porch in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews around about him, means they surrounded him, and said, How long does that make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They're alleging that he's talking ambiguously. He's not putting forth his claim clear enough. That's a charge, a false charge. Because we know he didn't speak ambiguously. He put forth his claim that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah. But the Jews want to pick up a fight. They didn't like his preaching. Him calling them, you generation of wipers, you whited sepulchers, you wicked and adulterous generation, you fools, you snakes. Would you like to hear people addressing you like that? And the Jews were not a people to forget in a hurry. So, they find the man alone, they surround him, brandishing finger in his face. Come on, tell us. Why don't you tell us? They want to pick up a fight with him, so they can work themselves into a frenzy and give him a good bashing. Get their own back. So Jesus says, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. He said, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. 28, verse 28. Verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Verse 30, I and my father are one. In this, to see that once the man has accepted faith, he remains in faith. I as the teacher sees to, see to that, as well as God Almighty sees to that. In purpose, we are one. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And if you're looking for trouble, you, you don't have to go very far. You get it around the corner. So they picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufa. Because the thou being a man make us thyself a God. You are a man, you're claiming to be God. There's another false charge. First false charge was that he was talking ambiguously. Now, another false charge that you're claiming to be God. That's the Jews alleged. The Christian agreed with the Jews. They said he did make such a claim, but he was entitled to it. Let us hear what Jesus says. The Jews say he blasphemed. The Christians say he did, but it is no blasphemy because he was entitled to. What does Jesus say? He says, is it not written in your law? Verse 31. Is it, verse 32, is it not written in your law? Law means the Torah. I said ye are gods. Ye, you, are gods. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, I mean the prophets are called gods in our language, man. The prophets. God Almighty speaks to Moses and he says, Behold, I have made you a god to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In the book of Psalms, 82nd Psalm, verse 6, it says, Ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. That's the genius of the Jewish language. That when a person is called God, he is not God. Like in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, the Bible says, And the devil is the God of this world. Is he God? The devil, shaitan. No, this is your language. This means he's in control, so you say he's God. Moses is God to Pharaoh, and you Jews are all gods. That is the genius of the Jewish language. Now, you can't say, call for divinity on that. He said, is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. If he called them gods, and the scripture cannot be broken, means you can't contradict me. 
see of him whom the father had sanctified and sent into the world that thou blasphemest because I said I'm the son of God which is nothing man God has got sons by the tons in our community in our language why are you trying to find fault with me when I'm only saying I'm the son of God when others are called gods the verse statement brother Shorosh is referred to from my book what is his name? I took the trouble to give him all my books. All the ammunition I have, I send it to him. He asked for it, I send everything. All that I had written. Everything, all the facts are given in black and white. I said, now you can work from this. It's easier to answer. Once you have it in black and white before you, you know my arguments beforehand. I was not afraid. Because I know none of these arguments can really be, intellectually can be contradicted. Listen. God Almighty says, in the Quran now, another test is given. Most certainly Messiah, Jesus the son of Mary, is no more than an apostle. Many were the messengers that passed away before him. And his mother was a virtuous woman, a saintly woman. And they both at food. So, what's the exception about that? We all eat food, don't we? No, this is in reference to the idea that they are gods or supernatural. The Roman Catholics call Mary the mother of God. Mary is the mother of God. Jesus is the son of God. And as God, as our brother Shorosh, as well as many Christians believe that he is God in human form, he is God incarnate. So, if they are such godly people, then they both had food. So if they had food, that means they had a call of nature. If you eat, you must look for the toilet sooner or later, or look for the bush or the rocks. It can't be helped. God Almighty doesn't tell you in those words, but listen to what he says. Unzur, kaifa nubayino lahumulayati. Says, see how we make our signs clear to you that they both ate food. The implications of eating food. Unzur, see how we make our signs clear to you. Summanzur, have another look. Look, have another look. How they have deviated from the path gone away from the true path, attributing to God an animal nature, that he is like a man. We are made in his image. What image? This image? This is the monkey image. We are all glorified monkeys. Some look like chimpanzees, some like baboons, some like something else, you know, gorillas, all of us. We are all glorified monkeys. Is that the image God is talking about? <laughs> and the Christian says yes. Christian says yes. I said, God said in the book of Genesis, quoted by Dr. Shorosh, he said, and God said, let there be light. I said, did he say that with his mouth? He said, yes. Did he utter the words? He said, yes. So God has got a mouth? He said, yes. So if he's got a mouth, he must have teeth as well. Teeth, teeth. Can you imagine a toothless God, a God without teeth? The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Can you imagine a God like that? So he says, no, he must have teeth. Yes, he's got teeth. Then I said, he's got a tongue. He said, he's got a tongue. Then he must have a larynx and the lungs. He said, yes. Then he's going to talk, talk, talk. The light, sun, moon, stars, billions of creation. He's talking, 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 talking. His mouth goes dry. So he must need liquid to lubricate. If this type of mouth he has, he must need some lubrication. No? He said, yes. So once that lubrication goes in, there must be an outlet as well. No? Can you imagine? What are you bringing God down to? An anthropomorphic conception. God is like a man. Then talking about plural. God said, he says, Elohim. Im. The first chapter of Genesis, chapter, verse 3 also. Elohim in Hebrew, Elohim, the God. I said, you know, Elohim is a plural. Yes. My Arab brother says, yes, it's plural. There are two types of plurals in Hebrew and Arabic, which he confirmed, and dual as well. Singular, plural, and dual. Uh, uh, singular, dual, and plural. Yes, Arabic as well as Hebrew. But in, in every Bible, there are a hundred different versions. The word is Elohim. 
gods. I haven't seen a single Bible yet which says, God's said, let there be light. It should be God's, not God. It's Elohim. It says, what is this Im? Ask the Jew, ask the Arab. But if it doesn't suit us, we ignore. Im is a plural of respect in Hebrew. In Arabic, we have two types of plurals, same like Hebrew. When Allah says in the Quran, Inna nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. It is we who have sent down the revelation and it is for us to protect it. Ask any Muslim, the most simplest of us, how many gods are there? He says one. Then who is this us? Who is this we? Ask the Arab. No Arab in 1400 years has pointed a finger at the Muslims telling them that you are worshipping more than one God. When the Quran says, Qul huwa Allahu ahad, say he is Allah the one and only, then no Arab questions the Muslim to say, look, who is this we? Who is this us? Why don't you ask us? Why don't you ask your Arab brethren? Who is this we? Who are this us? He says, don't you know? You speak Arabic, Arabic is your language, you know we have two types of plurals, Plural of numbers and plural of respect. This is plural of respect in our language. 1400 years, no Arab has questioned us. I would like Dr. Shorosh to question me. To say, look, there are supposed to be more than one God in the Quran. I'd like to hear that from him. I said, these are two types of plurals. Plural of respect, plural of numbers. This is Hebrew, this is Arabic. So Jesus at Jesus ate, and his mother ate. And the Bible says, the Son of Man came, Son of Man again, Son of Man, Jesus, came eating and drinking. And they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber. This is Jesus, words of Jesus. That this is what the people are saying, that you are a gluttonous eater and a wine bibber. Matthew chapter 11 verse 19 and Luke chapter 7 verse 34. What then makes him God? His birth. He was born without a human father. So he must have a father. So his father is God. The Quran answers that very simply. The similitude of the example of Jesus in the sight of God is like that of Adam. He created him from dust. And he said, be, and he was. So if Jesus is God and the veritable son of God because he had no earthly father, then Adam is a greater God because he had no father and no mother. Simple, basic common sense. Do you stand, stand to reason? If Jesus had no father, that makes him God, then Adam is a greater God, no father, no mother. But ah, he said, you see, Adam was created from dust. And Jesus was born to a virgin. Uh-huh. So my brother, he already quoted Melchizedek. Yes, Melchizedek, the high priest of Salem. Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 and 3. It says, for this Melchizedek, in the Bible, in your Bible, open it. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 1 and 3. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, Salam, Islam, Salam, priest of the most high God, priest without father, without mother, without descent, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Who is that? It's God. The only one who is without beginning and end is God. Without father and mother is God. Who lives eternally is God. But he was a high priest, and Abraham was giving tithes, taxes, taxes, religious taxes he was giving to this man, Melchizedek. No father, no mother. Jesus had a mother, no father. So Melchizedek is greater than him. Jesus had a beginning in the stable, and he had an apparent end. This man, no beginning, no end. Who is greater? Who is greater? Melchizedek. I said, why don't you worship him? He deserves to be worshipped as God Almighty, if at all. This high priest of Salam. Salam. No. I said, stand to reason. This man, Jesus, he cries to God. Supposed to be on the cross. 
Matthew chapter 27, verse 46. He says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Who is he crying to? Himself, putting up an act, dramatizing himself, that he's dying now. He says, oh my God, my God, why you let me down? If he is God, how can he let himself down? And again in Mark chapter 15, verse 34, saying, who is he crying to? He's crying to Allah. Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah. Look, I'm asking the Jehovah's Witnesses. They have them among the Christians. You know, they go and harass people. Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm asking them. When Jesus said, Allah, Allah, Lama Sabahtani, I'm asking, does that sound to you like Jehovah, Jehovah Lama Sabahtani? He says, no. He says, no. So I said, listen again. Allah, Allah, Lama Sabahtani. Does that sound to you like Abba? Abba, Lama Sabahtani? Abba means father in Hebrew. No. Listen. Allah, Allah, Lama Sabahtani in Hebrew. Allah, Allah, Lama Taraktani in Arabic. Sound similar? Yes. Then in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, you read about John the disciple, he saw a vision, and in the vision he heard the angels in heaven singing, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. And when the Christian goes into ecstasy in my country, they shout, Alleluia, Alleluia. I'm asking, what is Alleluia? Hebe bure, hebe bure. No, no. What is Alleluia? Ya is a vocative and exclamation in Arabic and Hebrew. We begin with an exclamation, Ya Akhi, oh my brother. Ya Ummi, oh my mother. Ya Allah, oh Allah. The Westerner, he ends with an exclamation. He says, stop! S-U-P, stop! Exclamation mark. He says, fire! F-I-R-E, fire! Exclamation mark. That's the Westerner. That's his system. The genius of his language. So, Alaluya is Ya Allah Lu, Ya Allah Lu, Ya Allah Hu, Ya Allah Hu. Oh Allah, you are the only being who deserves worship and praise. Oh Allah, He is Allah. Hu Allah, Hu Allah, La ilaha illah Hu. He is Allah besides whom there is no other God. Al Malik, the King. Al Quddus, the Holy One. Al Salam, the source of peace and perfection. He is God. Not a child born in the stable to a Jewish girl. What makes him God? I want somebody to tell me, say, look, this is what makes him his birth. I says, that's it. His miracles, he gave life back to Lazarus, we are told. Did he? No. He says, when before calling Lazarus out, you know, he says, oh, my father. He looks up towards heaven. He says, my father, oh, my father, I know that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always. Always. Whatever I'm asking, you're giving it to me. You are doing the works. And I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people that stood by, this superstitious, credulous people, they are going to say that I gave life to the dead. They will say that I am God. For that reason, I am speaking to you loudly. Prior to that, he was groaning in the spirit. Groaning. Jesus wept. Groaning. What groaning? No, he was pouring out his heart to God. My friend Lazarus is dead. Oh, my Lord, bring him back from the dead and God Almighty associate him go ahead and ask what you want and you get it so now he's gonna call Lazarus out so he said oh my father I know that thou hast heard me and I know that thou hearest me always but because of the people that stood by I said it loudly audibly that they may believe that thou hast sent me and he says he that is sent is not greater than the one that sent him I can of my own self do nothing the word ye hear are not mine but the Father that sent me, he had given me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak, even as the Father that said unto me, so I speak. There is not a single and equivocal statement in any version of the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, or where he says, worship me. There is not a single explicit statement an equivocal statement, a plain, simple statement. There isn't. If there is, we Muslims would have no hesitation in accepting it. Simply because we know that Jesus Christ, as one of the mightiest messengers of God, he would never lie. The questions being asked, either he was a liar, you know, generally the Christians, he must be a liar or a lunatic or God. Why should you make such propositions? Why cannot the man be a mighty messenger of God? Why should he be a liar or a lunatic? Again and again in Christian literature, evangelists, they say either he's a liar or an imposter. Is the opposite of liar, imposter, what is it? God, is the opposite of God, imposter? Is the opposite of God, lunatic? 
No. What is the antonym for? God. Is there? How can you say this or that? This or that? Why can't he be what he claims to be? That he is a messenger of God. And as such, follow him. He says, he is not of me, who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. If you follow me, you will get eternal life. Listen to him, you hearken to him, what he says, what he teaches. And that is salvation. If you don't do that, verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. And you can't be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments. Listen to him, follow him, and if you follow him, you can't help being a Muslim. Wa dawan alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Thank you very much, Mr. Dida. Elai, Elai, Lama Sabachthani. Does that sound to you like Abba? Abba, Lama Sabachthani? Abba means father in Hebrew. No. Listen. Elai, Elai, Lama Sabachthani in Hebrew. Allah, Allah, Lama Taraktani in Arabic. Sound similar? Yes. Then in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, you read about John the disciple. He saw a vision. And in the vision, he heard the angels in heaven singing. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. And when the Christian goes into ecstasy in my country, they shout, Alleluia, Alleluia. I'm asking, what is Alleluia? Hebe bure, hebe bure. No, no. What is Alleluia? Ya is a vocative and exclamation in Arabic and Hebrew. We begin with an exclamation. We say, Ya Akhi, oh my brother. Ya Ummi, oh my mother. Ya Allah, oh Allah. The Westerner, he ends with an exclamation. He says, stop! S-U-P, stop! Exclamation mark. He says, fire! F-I-R-E, fire! Exclamation mark. That's the Westerner. That's his system. The genius of his language. So, Alaluya is Ya Allah Lu, Ya Allah Lu, Ya Allah Hu, Ya Allah Hu. Oh Allah, you are the only being who deserves worship and praise. Oh Allah, he is Allah. He is Allah besides whom there is no other God. Al-Malik, the King, Al-Quddus, the Holy One, As-Salam, the source of peace and perfection. He is God. Not a child born in the stable to a Jewish girl. What makes him God? I want somebody to tell me, say, look, this is what makes him his birth. I says, that's it. His miracles, he gave life back to Lazarus, we are told. Did he? No. He says, when before calling Lazarus out, you know, he says, Oh, my father. He looks up towards heaven. He says, my father, oh my father, I know that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always. Always. Whatever I'm asking, you're giving it to me. You are doing the work. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people that stood by, this superstitious, credulous people, they are going to say that I gave life to the dead. They will say that I am God. For that reason, I'm speaking to you loudly. Prior to that, he was groaning in the spirit groaning Jesus wept groaning what groaning no he was pouring out his heart to God my friend Lazarus is dead oh my Lord bring him back from the dead and God Almighty associate him go ahead and ask what you want and you get it so now he's gonna call Lazarus out so he said oh my father I know that thou hast heard me and I know that thou hearest me always but because of the people that stood by I said it loudly audibly that they may believe that thou hast sent me he says, he that is sent is not greater than the one that sent him. I can of my own self do nothing. The word you hear are not mine. But the father that sent me, he had given me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. Even as the father that said unto me, so I speak. There is not a single and equivocal statement in any version of the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God or where he says, worship me. There is not a single explicit statement, an equivocal statement, a plain, simple statement. There isn't. If there is, we Muslims would have no hesitation in accepting it. Simply because we know that Jesus Christ, as one of the mightiest messengers of God, he would never lie. The questions being asked, either he was a liar, 
You know, generally the Christian says he must be a liar or a lunatic or God. Why should you pro make such propositions? Why cannot the man be a mighty messenger of God? Why should he be a liar or a lunatic? Again and again in Christian literature, evangelists, they say either he's a liar or an imposter. Is the oppos opposite of liar. Imposter, what is it? God is the opposite of God, imposter. Is the opposite of God, lunatic? No. What is the antonym for God? Is there? How can you say this or that, this or that? Why can't he be what he claims to be? That he is a messenger of God. And as such, follow him. He says, he is not of me, who does not take his cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. If you follow me, you will get eternal life. Listen to him, you hearken to him, what he says, what he teaches. And that is salvation. If you don't do that, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except your righteousness exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. There is no heaven for you unless you are better than the Jew. And you can't be better than the Jew by not keeping the laws and the commandments. Listen to him, follow him, and if you follow him, you can't help being a Muslim. Wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Thank you very much, Mr. Vida.